I, I'm having a, a wonderful conversation before I pushed record uh, with American composer Nan Schwartz in Hollywood, and I mean in Hollywood, as in her whole life. Am I wrong? I mean, your whole life, your family, your parents, the whole thing. It's like Hollywood film and television, and, and this, this is your profession as a composer, arranger, songwriter, hello, conductor. Have I left anything out? <laughs> uh, orchestrator. Orchestrator, thank you. Uh, Time singer. And on it, and on it goes, uh, and, and this is the career in that very, very um, competitive and very, very busy industry called Hollywood film and television. Uh, a, a Grammy winner, best arrangements for for a, a Natalie Cole album, and I'm going to put up one of those excerpts when, when we get my review of your CD. We're going to talk about it in a minute uh, up at PerformingArtsReview.net. But uh, five-time nominee, you've, you've heard all this a million times, a seven-time Emmy nominee. I mean, it goes on and on and on, and we're talking from age 10? When, I was singing professionally from a young age, yeah. In, in Hollywood and, and so on. And your parents, give us give us a little rundown so everybody knows about your family and all that good stuff. Well, my parents were kind of famous in the big band era. My dad was the lead clarinet with Glenn Miller and created that uh, Glenn Miller sound with the clarinet lead over the four saxes. Which, by the way, you have never forgotten. Hello. Go ahead. <laughs> and my mother was with Tommy Dorsey. She was one of the sentimentalists. So she had hits like Sunny Side of the Street and Chicago and others. And... Um, and they came out west to L.A., and my dad decided to get in the studio scene. My mom thought she was going to retire, but she was sort of lured out of um, domesticity uh, because they heard that she could was a good reader and great alto. And so she was sort of drafted into the studios, and she had a parallel career to my dad. She was a studio mm. singer, and my dad was a studio musician. So I grew up around that uh, environment, and I think the most important um, element of all of that, in addition to them just being cool people to be around and, and their friends and all that, was the fact that they've always played great music in the house. And it was either great jazz or it was great classical music. And I just got exposed to a lot of stuff that just has stayed with me and I think hopefully has been part of my, um, you know, my, my palette. Which segues us into your uh, first orchestral CD. Am I okay with that? It's, yeah. it's this is big. This is really big, I think. Uh, uh, and you, by the way, you sh you share it with the Australian composer Brent and Broadstock. We're going to ask. I'm going to want to ask. I, I hear it in the music, the simpatico ness uh, between you two. But I just wonder if there's a history there, of friendship and collegiality. Why don't Why don't you answer that one right now? <laughs> well, no, Brenton and I met uh, in Vienna when we were recording the orchestral part of my album. Um, we shared a commonality in that the conductor and producer of the record, Kevin Purcell, Australian himself, um, decided uh, he wanted to champion both of us, and he knew Brenton's work, but he um, got a hold of my music, and I think he heard Angels Among Us and said, wow, this is great, do you have anything else? And I said, yeah, I do. So um, an album was born. He took a chance on me. He wanted to champion a new composer and... and and he, he chose me, and I'm very honored and flattered. By the way, that is very interesting. I had no idea. Yeah. So I had no idea. Uh, and, and, and Wow. So there you go. And now let me be corny for just a second, then, then we'll move on with this thing, because I, I, I try to play hunches, and sometimes I'm just completely wrong, and you're going to slap me down on this one, I'm sure. But I know that, that artists, you'll agree with this, I'm sure, put things together very, very carefully. They, they're very organized. They have purpose. They have a beginning. They have a middle. They have an end. Okay, so here's here it is. It's just a thought. What I see in your share of this CD, by the way, the major share of the CD, uh, are four wonderful orchestral works with soloists. I'm going to ask you to uh, list them for me in a minute because they're the best of the best. Uh, but here's what I see in terms of titles, okay? This is where you get to slap me down. Aspirations. Very early, absolutely stunning, incredible, amazing. I don't even know where to begin about discussing orchestration and everything else, and that is your expertise. But but here we go. Aspirations, followed by perspectives. And somehow, to me, that means you reach a certain level above aspirations and you have a certain amount of perspective. Romanza, I don't know, you have a daughter. And then Angels Among Us, whatever, happy 
circumstance has brought you to this point. Am I all wet? No, I mean the, the title. <laughs> is, that, is that your point? That, the that is my point. Yeah, that there is a, that there is a narrative, a, a, a sequential narrative in these four titles. Well, yeah, and I could spend twenty minutes discussing that, but we don't have that much time. <laughs> but but yes, yeah, they are. They I think titles are important, and um, and so I think they reflected what what I was going through at the time. Very, very interesting. I, lo I love the order of it all. So I'm glad I asked that question. That, for me, that was a, a, a risk of just being just a complete jerk. So thank you very much. Uh, about film scoring, you know, I, I, it's magic. It really is magic. But the whole art of, because uh, I've known a couple, you know, who are film scorers, and, and what, what happens, you, you're delivered a piano score, let's say, and you said, okay, or orchestrate this thing <laughs> for a full symphony orchestra. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay, straighten me out. Well, a film score is they come to you and say, no, write original music for our film. It has nothing to do with anybody's piano score. I meant orchestration, I guess. That's maybe where oh, I got lost in the words. Well, today's orchestration is different than um, the, the orchestration of uh, 10 years ago or so when people would come to give you a sketch maybe, or sometimes, in my husband's case, he's, he's a pretty well-known orchestrator in Hollywood, Conrad Pope. Yes. And, wow. And he, he has been known to get sheets of blank paper with the word blue on it or happy, meaning that he had to compose the whole thing. And um, not, not only that, but he had to know the, he had to be a master of the ancient art, which is, I hope I'm going down a, the proper path here, which is tonality and temperament, which they knew in the 16th century. In other words, happy. What key areas are those, and so on? And how do you orchestrate that? That's kind of what I was getting at, because I love your big, rich, gorgeous orchestrations. Uh, uh, you know, how, how, how do, I'm asking, because I'm a conductor, how do composers make decisions about it? Here we'll have a sweeping horn quartet followed by, you know, that's what I'm well, trying to get at. You have, um, at least with me, I have melodic and harmonic ideas first, and then as I'm going along, I'm figuring out who's going to be playing it. But it may not be the first idea, although I do write with the instruments in mind, but that's this, that's kind of secondary. Um, the first is to have the kind of the structure and the architecture and the bones mm -hmm. of the piece in mind, and then um, the, the broad strokes, and then you start getting into details of who's playing what, when, how, and stuff like that. Why don't we talk about all four pieces, if you could just kind of in, uh, somewhat briefly run us down. This will give you an opportunity to introduce these wonderful soloists. That are there. And by the way, this is a kind of interest. I, I, I think I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, have been in a closet too long of classical music, but I love this idea of, in, in, for example, in Aspirations, this broad, gorgeous orchestral palette, obviously written, uh, and so on. All that good orchestral stuff, and all those you know Shostakovichian uh, excerpts and, and Ravelian moments, and then this incredible concerto. In a free in a free form with improvisation, and then somehow tying it all together and ending the piece, and you do that on more than one uh, piece. I think that's almost a unique form. So you want to speak to that, and then give me some soloists. <laughs> well, I the aspirations was written for a, a, a group called the New American Orchestra, which was sort of um, coming out of that Gunther Schuller uh, third string yeah. um, idea, which is to to uh, blend the jazz and classical together. So they were looking for these kinds of pieces, and I was commissioned to write one of them, and I did. It was the first big piece I had ever written, and I was a little, obviously, pretty daunted by it. And if it seems like I've been imitative, it's because I was young, and I hadn't quite established my style yet, I suppose, but uh, those were... Oh, but I, but, but I would allow me just to disagree. It's not about imitating styles. It's about absorbing the magic of certain things that must then, of course, be used again. It's as old as the Baroque literature. I'm thinking of that little Shostakovich excerpt. I can't quite remember where it comes from. Uh, it's in the Fifth Symphony. Fifth Symphony. It, uh, well, yeah. you, you didn't you didn't steal it. You didn't really even homage it in a way. You just took borrowed some of that uh, some of that stuff. Yeah, that's well, what I was getting at. Yeah, thank you. I. Uh... <laughs> so, so anyway, that that idea that I they were looking for a kind of piece like that gave me the liberty to, to write um, the jazz section of that piece because it needed to get to something like that to, in order to, to meet, the, to, to be appropriate for that group that was playing it. 
And that was great because it just is really who I am anyway. So it just, I was happy to do it. <laughs> you want to tell me about Johnny Mandel? Oh, he's yeah, my let me, let me use it. Let me you take a little quote from your blog because I love it. Okay. Yeah. It says, when I heard his evocative film score to The Sandpiper, I think subconsciously my career path was set. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I was just young, and I my dad brought the album home, and he had played on the soundtrack, and he had played, he said it was uh, one of the highlights of his career, and so I wasn't even old enough to see the movie. It was a racy movie, and it was a dumb movie, but... I just fell in love with the music. We played it all the time, and it just, I thought, I, I didn't, I was too young, and, and I also a woman, so it didn't ever, ever, ever occur to me to, to even be a composer at that point in time, but I knew that I loved the sounds, and then later on, uh, when I was sort of reevaluating my career path, well, if you read the, the liner notes, it talks about my broken leg and all that. And yes, the, uh, the skiing accident. Yes, exactly, so... <laughs> When, then at that moment in time when, when this family friend said, you know, what's your big dream? And I said, well, I would have liked to write, you know, a score like the Sandpiper, but it's too late. I'm a woman and I'm, I've already gone to college. And she said, well, why don't you study privately and why don't you become the first woman? And so I just got fired up by that conversation. And, um, and sadly, no one wants the Sandpiper today. <laughs> You know, I remember the movie, and I must have been a teen at the time. I don't quite remember the score, but you made oh, me, you you made me want to go. I'm going to have to go look it up. And the other thing is, uh, and again, I don't mean to be, you know, maudlin or uh, dwell on these things. We're, we're moving on, all of us. But, uh, you know, you have indicated that uh, even in your own consciousness, slap me around again, again if I'm incorrect, but you already even had a feeling that, oh, I'm a woman, I can't, you know, at some point in your career. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is it's hard, hard, hard. And you're a survivor, survivor, survivor. What is it? Why am I a survivor? Yeah. How, why I not? I think I had just enough success and encouragement from other people to know that I was on the right path and just to keep, mm -hmm. keep at it. You know, if I had a lot of failures, then maybe I wouldn't be doing it. But I, I had successes and I had acknowledgement and... Um, um, what's the word um, validation through the awards and yes. stuff like that Excellent. Well, that's it. And also, I suppose, uh, the uh, dare I ask, well, first of all, dare I ask about future projects? Can you tell me anything? Come on, give something away. Something I'm big. working on a musical right now. Oh, you said that. Yeah, go ahead. Give us more on that one. Well, I can't talk about the project itself. It's sort of top secret, but we're in the process of putting together that famous backers audition demo where they sell the show with the top seven songs. So uh -huh. um, I've written seven songs with a wonderful lyricist named Lorraine Feather and uh, we're just hoping it's going to have some success we just you, you never know but it's been a whole new genre for me and I've really enjoyed it did I miss the title I didn't tell you because I'm not at, See, liberty. at liberty to do so okay gotcha but if you want to check back with me in a month or two I'll be able to talk about <gasps> what a tease okay yeah. and, and uh, finally um, you know it's something about uh, I, I, I think of I think it's going to be so corny, uh, but honestly, I think about mountains to climb and the reasons to do so. I'm thinking of Bobby Kennedy, and he said, because they're there. And, and part of me asks, you know, all, all of this, all of this life that you've had, uh, has there, I probably asked it even earlier, but, but uh, has it been easy? Has it been, has it, has it been been okay has it have you even thought about it really because you come from this family that was so connected to you i'm just so curious about uh, that possible gorilla that we've mentioned a couple times anyway wait you mean the being a woman yeah oh i don't think about that i just try to um i think one of the reasons i i'm sort of multi uh going in so many different directions career-wise between you know orchestration film and TV composing, Broadway composing, songwriting, doing all this is that when I have a lull in one area, I just move on to another area. That's just good business. It sort of served yeah. me well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also it sort of was born out of the feeling of, oh, they think they know me, but 
they don't really know who I am. Let me show them that I can also do this. And so I'm always, I've got that sort of competitive edge that makes me want to keep showing it. So, gotcha, on, gotcha on that. And the reason I'm, I'm simpatico, here's my confession, and then we get we better end this, <laughs> which is that, you know, I'm a conductor by training. I had a modest little career in Seattle. I'll tell I you love all. Seattle. Pardon? Oh, I do too. My uh, daughter graduated, just graduated from the University of Washington. I, I was up there quite a bit. This it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful city, even as big as it has now become. I was there in the 70s and the 80s. But my point is that I just want to confess uh, my consciousness about how easy it is to be a man. <laughs> is it? It is, still. Uh, which is that I, myself, as a conductor, I have a lot of trouble with women conductors. For, oh. for ridiculous, uh, nonsensical reasons of a sick head. See what I mean about prejudice, how it's just can be so ingrained. And it took me a long time to realize that uh, th this was nonsense. It's about, as you said earlier, talent and achievement and what you accomplish. Well, I think women conductors have made better inroads um, as, as have women classical composers than women film composers. And I think the reason there is has to do with money mm -hmm. because there's so much money riding on these films and studios don't want to take a chance. Mm -hmm. And so they just go with the basic... I mean, a perfect example is I... Uh, lobbied very hard to get the score to Fifty Shades of Grey, a, a rather seamy film about a seamy subject, but I thought, hey, I'm the target audience, and it should be a woman writing it, right? Now well, you mentioned it, yeah, I, I know of these, it's a series of novels even, or something, yeah, stories made, or something like that. Yeah, made three movies, hugely successful, and yeah. it's real, you know, it's real B stuff, but nevertheless, I thought, uh, I could get this, you know, and I could do it, and, um, and they hired Danny Elfman, and Danny Elfman is a sort of a his, his style is nothing like well and I don't even think he wrote the music himself I think he probably farmed it out to his team and all that and he didn't care but the point is that the studio needed a big name on that questionable movie that had a uh, female director by the way and some mm -hmm. other people that were not tried and true so they got a name composer to like give them security and make them feel okay like, yeah <clears throat> Thus, I have heard from others <clears throat> in your neck of the woods, uh, friends of mine that I know. And so it's treacherous, it's r ruthless, it's airheaded, it's, am I in trouble yet? It's, uh, <laughs> so again, uh, congratulations in particular. Well, well thank you. But, uh, you know, I, it seems like the world of classical music is full of pure, pure hearted people. Am I right? <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Man Schwartz, what a great pleasure uh, chatting with you. I'm going to have a review up here, I promise, uh, yep. of, of your CD. Uh, what you really think of the album. What did I really? Oh, oh I, I can tell you right away. Uh, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I can't think of any other way to, to explain what a pleasure, in, in, including your colleagues' music, but just what a beautiful uh, experience that CD is, let alone the other stuff that I'll be talking about. <laughs> the other good stuff, by the way. Uh, okay. Beautifully recorded, beautifully engineered. You you understand, you know this. Great. Yeah. And by the way, congratulations on also breaking down some barriers as a conductor. I forgot, I, you know, we went, went there, but I didn't quite congratulate you on that. Oh, thanks. I'm no competitive threat to you. Don't worry. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm retired now. I'm no threat to anybody. Uh, <laughs> okay. Listen, thanks very much. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for calling. Bye.